Okay, here we are in VizRT Artist. Before I begin anything or start importing or designing, what I'm going to do is set up a folder for myself where I'm going to put all my assets and my scenes. So I'm going to come up here into the server, into the P button here. I can click or I can just drag it. I'm just going to drag it down. It's going to ask me for a name. Let's just call it Design Tutorial 1. I'm going to go ahead, click OK or Enter, and it creates a folder here. Next, I actually want to import my images that I just made in Photoshop. So I'm going to come over to my I tab, highlight that, make sure that's selected. My Design Tutorial 1 folder is selected here. I'm going to come all the way over to the right on the main tab bar to the Import button and find the folder where you saved your images. So we come into the folder where it is and we have this drop down here which is set to archives by default. We're just going to switch this to images. Once you do that you should see the images that you saved. I'm going to multi-select them by holding down control. Here's my BG1, my BG2, my green swatch and my white swatch. So I'm just going to go ahead and select them and drag these over into this folder. And here you can see it populates this folder with the four images that I'm going to use to basically help us build this scene here. Now before I actually start building, I know that I also might want some materials. So I'm going to come into my M tab here and start creating some materials. And if I right click in here, it gives us the box to create a new material. So let's just begin by creating a black one. I'll give it the name black, double click on the material, come into the color adjuster here and just make it the black color that you want. I'm also going to do a white one as well. So I'm going to create a new material. This time we'll just call it white. Click OK. I'm just going to leave it as the default color there. Also just maybe I'm going to make a green color too as well. So I'm going to come into the color editor and just eyeball it up here with a green color. I kind of like that. I'll go ahead hit that and close it. So I have three materials here. Now let's go into the S tab and we're actually going to start creating our scene. And the first scene that we're going to create here is a lower third. So I'm going to right click in the S tab in my design tutorial folder and create a new scene. We can just call this anything uh, related to lower third. I'll call it L3. Once I do that, I get a little thumbnail here. I'm just going to double click on this thumbnail and this is where we're going to begin. First thing I'm going to do is slide this group down into our tree here and let's just call this lower third group. Again, naming convention, something you can do all on your own. All right, before I do anything else, I also know that I need my company logo. So I'm going to go ahead and import our logo here too. And I have a generic logo here that I'm using for this tutorial. If you have your own logo, you can certainly use that to swap it out. So if I'm in my images here, I just imported this logo and you can see it has an alpha channel on it. It's just an image. So we're going to be using this logo throughout the tutorial. But like I said, if you have your own, feel free to use it. Instead of just designing over white, I'm actually going to use an image to throw in the background. And I'm just going to use the search button here to search for an image. So I'll go to all types, images, properties, and I'm just going to look for something that begins with TV. And here I have a anchor woman. So I just double click on that. And I'm just going to slide this into my folder here that I'm working in. I'm going to go into my scene settings and I'm just going to drag this picture of the anchor woman into the background image here so that we can really see what we're doing when we're building our scene. From here, I'm ready to start building. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my built ins. I'm going to build the scene with everything built in from Viz. So I'm going to go ahead and begin by dragging the Nagi down as a subcontainer of my lower third group. If you want to rename the Nagi, you can just double click on it. I'm just going to call this backplate. Again, if you further want to organize your scene, you can. So I drag a group down here. I put the Nagi inside of this group and maybe we can call this backplate design or something like that. So I click on my Nagi here. First thing I want to do is adjust the width. So let's type in 550 to spread it out. If you want to turn on your safe area and title area to see where you are, you can do that by clicking on the TA and the SA area here. Now I want my corners to be sharp, so I'm going to come down to my bevel areas. I'm going to set all of these to zero. I'm going to set my stretch to about negative 20 instead of the default value of 10. And the height 
let's bring down to about 75 or 80 or so. So somewhere right in there we can use it. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump back into my server into my images and I'm going to drag one of my BG's one or two image down depending which and how you want it to look it doesn't matter which one you use I'm going to use BG1 I drag it down you can see how this looks I have my bounding box on you can turn that off if it helps you see a little bit better my mapping here I'm just going to change to vertex to see how it looks again depending how you want yours to look and what image you're using could you'll get different results here not a big fan of the vertex I'm going to change it back to linear and just kind of increase it the size right there all right so that's the first part now I'm also going to place my logo down here for a little bit of placement so I'm just going to drag this down as part of our lower third group again if you want to group it to further organize it you can so I'll just go ahead and type in logo under that group we don't see it because of the Z space so I'm just going to go ahead and increase my Z space of my logo to one I'm briefly going to just reposition it here. Maybe we'll scale it up a little bit too. Now I want to keep adding to my lower third and I'm going to go back into my built-ins. I'm going to add another Nagi. Again, I may group this to further organize it. And this is going to be our sub headline design here. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in this group. Again, I drug this Nagi down, but we don't see it. As soon as I increase the Z position, we'll see it. I'm going to go into my Nagi editor here. I'm going to make the width about 400. We're going to decrease the bevels of each corner again to zero. We're going to make the height to roughly maybe around 35. And we're going to set the stretch to negative 20 again. We're going to reposition this. So we'll click on the transformation editor and use our X and Y variable here to reposition it. Now instead of the sharp edge on the left hand side here, what I want to do is bevel it. So I'm going to come back into my Nagi into my top left and just bevel this to about 20. So I'm going to go into my server and I'm going to go into my images and I'm going to use one of these images that I created in Photoshop. So I'm going to drag this green swatch image down onto my Nagi. I'm going to go into the mapping parameters here. Uh, let's first change it to vertex and I'm going to change it back to linear and instead of using the locked scale I'm going to set it to single and spread out my X here and I'll also decrease my Y scaling a little bit to try and get a look something like that. Good enough for now we can always adjust it later. Now I want to create a plate on top of that green one so I'm actually just going to copy this Nagi by holding down control clicking and dragging and you see that little plus sign there and the brackets that will allow us to know where it's going I'm gonna get rid of the green image instead replace it with this white image again we don't see it initially because we need to adjust the Z position so I'll come into my Z position here and we can increase this to 2 we also want to back off the width a little bit so I'm just going to decrease the width and maybe the height a little bit as well just to see a little bit of the green behind it. Now I need to readjust the image so I'm going to click on the image here. I'm going to come into the image editor. Again I can use our mapping parameters to kind of set it how we want. I'm going to keep it at linear and I'm just going to scale out the X and decrease the Y again. So we get a little bit of shading on the top and the bottom and a little bit on the left as well. Now I just want to reposition this a little bit so I'm just going to slide this left and maybe we'll just slide this down to something like that. Almost there I just need a couple of more elements here. I'm going to use one more built-in object just to give us a little separator here. So I'm going to go into my built-ins I'm going to drag a rectangle down here as well. I'm going to click on the rectangle editor. I'm going to turn on use vertex colors. I'm going to click on the upper left chip. Use my color picker here to basically come into my lower third and kind of pick this color here. And then once I have that one color, I'm just going to copy it down to each other color within my rectangle. I'm going to increase my Z position of this rectangle 
So I'll just come in one or maybe even two. I'm going to go back into my rectangle. I'm going to adjust the width to about 500 or 550. Let's try. It's too much, so we'll go 500. I'm going to adjust the height down to about one or two, so it's a very thin line here. I set it at 1.5, and I just want to kind of reposition this left and up. Still a little bit long, so let's type 350 and see how that's going to work out. Again, we can constantly tweak this as we go along. I just basically want some type of separation here between my headline text and my subline text. All right, so we don't need to sit here and play with it all day. I think you get the point. Now that I have all this, I'm actually going to need to add the text. So again, if you want to organize your scene tree here, you can add another group. And we can just call this like text group. Now I'm going to go back into my server. And since we never actually imported a font, we need to get a font into the system here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the import tab. I'm going to navigate just to my regular Windows fonts. So I'll go into my C, Windows, and then we'll have a font folder in here. So on this drop down, we we'll just want to make sure that our fonts are selected. And maybe we'll just do a very generic font. We'll just import the Arial black and the Arial regular. So once I drag my fonts over here, you can see that it's creating or importing these fonts. And even though we only imported two, it made additional versions for us. So we have four blurs, we have four outlines of these fonts. All right, so we we'll go back into our scene here. Let's drag our first font down into our text group container. Again, we don't see it. We need to increase our Z position. And I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. And we're just going to reposition this. I'm going to go into the font editor here. I'm making sure that my orientation is set left. And we can type in something here. We'll type in headline. I'm going to change my type of font from geometry to texture. And I'm going to keep it as is right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And if you want to rename these, you can. I'm going to call this one headline. And I'm going to call this one subline. Now I'm going to move my subline down and increase the Z position as well. We'll also scale this down a little bit. We'll go back into our server, into our M tab, and drag the black material on this subline. So the scene is almost ready. We have a couple of more adjustments that we need to make. First, what I'm going to do is use the main group here, the lower third group, to move this down to the bottom of our screen. So I have my title area and safe area on here. It kind of tells us where we need to place it. So I'm just going to place it roughly right around here. Before I begin to do any type of animation, I kind of want to set this up so that it functions correctly when it's actually in Trio. And the one thing that I will need to do is make sure my text constraints to the proper amount. So I'm going to use a plugin called the Max Size. I'm going to go into the built-ins, into the container plugins here, into the Tools folder, and you're going to see a plugin here called Max Size. We're going to drop this onto our text containers. First, on my headline, when I drag that down, it makes it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to come into my Max Size plugin, and we're just going to decrease our default Y scale and our default X scale. My max width is set to 1000 by default. I'm just going to randomly type in 500 and test and see where that boundary is. So as I come in here and type, you can see roughly when we reach that 500 where it begins to shrink. So I like that. It's good enough for now. If you need to tweak it further, you're certainly welcome to. I'm just going to copy that max size down onto my subline. I'm going to come in and readjust this a little bit further to make it back to its size. Again, we can come into the text or subline text here and retype to test it. So we can say this is the subline and we'll need to spread our max size out. So let's try 700 and we'll come back into the text here and we'll just fill in some gaps and you see when it reaches the right side of that how it starts to shrink. So this is where I'm going to keep it. Now that we have that all set up, basically the next step is to animate it. 